You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. Welcome to the Neon City. The streets are dangerous and will kill you certainly as the omnipresent smog. You can call a flying cab from a public coin-op phone, a brave labyrinth tracks of transit authority rails to get around. Every slum track has a smoky jazz club that plays a host of gangsters, socialites, and holographic big bands. The city's poor and desperate in a never-ending twilight of rain and neon, clawing for survival. Unfathomably wealthy titans of industry live in gilded spires above the clouds, where the danger lies in neither fist nor gun but the slip of the tongue. If you have moxie and the skills to back it, you might just live to see the sunrise. Welcome to Tabletop Arcanum, this is Justin, and today I am bringing you a review of Neon Blues, a tabletop RPG put out by Voidgate Games. It is a digital uh, game available straight from them. It is $10, and they provided a copy for us to take a look at and see what it is all about. So, first impressions. Neon Blues gives you a very noir-esque feel for it, but also that slight sci-fi neon, not quite dystopian flavor. And the cover art and a subsequent layout of the book really does try to lend into that theme. Anywhere from some of the language to some of the graphical layouts and art pieces makes it very keen. Another thing that caught our attention right away was the simplicity of the system. It is a 30-page rulebook from cover to cover. And realistically, about a third of it is already used as a sample uh, adventure story. And the rest of it is really just enough to get you going and enough to get to be dangerous. Now, Neon Blues, I've got the vibe of this one as more of a noir detective in a sci-fi, almost Blade Runner-esque style setting, but not quite as desperate or dystopian, but more... If 1920s noir film was just put into the 3230s. So let's talk about some of the things that we enjoyed around Neon Blues. Ultimately, the simplicity of Neon Blues lies into its system that pretty much everything is done with uh, a dice pool and potential upgrades of D6s to D8s. But keeping that 4s and 5s are successes, 6s, 7s, and 8s are critical successes, and that you can use uh, 1, 2, 3s as failures, even critical failures and just kind of see where the dice fall to figure out where you are on the test difficulty. One thing I did appreciate quite a bit is your damage is actually damage to your actual attributes or stats in this game. And while you have your five stats, they are also your health. So as you get wounded, your ability to be too as good as you were starts to dwindle. And I think that is a great way to keep the system simple also a way to not have an arbitrary hit pool or anything of that nature and really just take it as you're taking damage to your own ability to do well not many rpgs out there really gravitate towards this most use that hit point arbitrary system but realistically i feel this is a gives you a little bit better gritty detail for the flavor that this game is going towards Likewise, to keep it simple, they only have a handful of skills, they only keep it on a very light level. The only major character customization is what sort of archetype are you playing, and gives you a little bit of a perk and negative and some items for yourself to start with. You can get up and going in a system like this very quickly, which is another great plus. Now, Neon Blues does have a little bit of opportunities in it, and that is mainly derived from the same things that it does well. Because it is such a light book and because it's such a small book, there is very little for setting or flavor of what is going on to give a real good flavor of what Neon City really is like. Terms are kind of tossed around. There is a glossary that helps a little bit on that, but ultimately it leaves you to fill in a lot of the blanks. Now, in some groups, this is going to be just fine. In other groups, you're going to be looking for a little bit more detail, maybe a picture of the city, a little bit more... That's not to say that there isn't any details at all. However, the page, page and a half or so that does try to go into that detail only does it at a very surface high level touch. 
So it would have been nice to see a little bit more in there, and I will say, arguably, the scenario that is presented in the back of the book does give a little bit more context and flavor to it. I would have preferred to see a little bit more uh, fleshed out in the regular GM section of the book. Overall, Neon Blues does hit a slightly different genre that sci-fi games of this genre hit a little bit more into the dystopian or things like cyberware or lean heavier into those ma maybe even magical themes and neon blues does not have any of that and it's also something that it can benefit from because you don't have to have any complicated magical systems with it. it is really just guns and moxie and just a bit of wit holding this thing together and that's great if it is a theme that you are interested in it is definitely worth checking out the ten dollar entry point for the book is well placed but if you're looking for something a little bit more meatier, a little more grindier, and have that extra level of crunch and mechanics to it, Neon Blues is not going to answer that for you. This is definitely more of a parlor, lighter RPG, so keep that in mind when looking at it. Hopefully that's giving you some ideas about Neon Blues, and if it's a game for you. This has been Tabletop Arcano. Make sure to follow us on social media. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Make sure to hit those like, comment, subscribe buttons. Let us know what you think. As always, thanks for listening, and happy gaming. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, produced by Justin Taylor. This episode is hosted by Justin Taylor. Mixing and editing by Richard Geese. Original theme by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. Check the description for this episode's featured background music. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and leave us a review if you would. As always, thanks for listening. Thank you.